Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome back to the building here for our Wednesday night Bible class. Um, again, if you haven't got a bulletin, there are a few on the table back here. Pick one up, go over it. Is there anything we need to share that may not be in the bulletin or anything, any news? Family, family and friends day, it is a potluck. There it is, is a potluck pot for friends and family. There is a sign-up sheet out front. And there's a sign-up sheet on the board out front. <clears throat> Very good. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Let's uh, open with a word of prayer and we'll get started. Almighty God, we are coming again to worship you. Father, to come to learn about you to understand you and, and most of all your son that uh, we can get we can look at the example that he has set before us father that we can walk in the way that you've given us Amen. father we're, we're thankful for your love your guidance and your encouragement that you give us each and every day that you that you love us in such a way that it's just hard to think father but the greatest gift of all the greatest blessing of all is, is that son of yours that died on the cross for our sins and we have a home in heaven with you. Amen. Be with us always. Be with us through this Bible class this evening. Be with Tommy as he shares what he has prepared. Father, as we go through your word that there may be something in there that we see that that we can that might catch our eye that we can glean something from. Be with us the rest of the evening and through the week. And again, thank you so much for Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Let's start out with 133. This is totally unintentional the way these two songs go. And when we get to the other one, you'll see why I said that. 133, I stand amazed. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Oh, marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. In the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own grief, but sweat drops of blood for mine. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my beheld him and came from the world of light to comfort him in his sorrow he bore for my soul that night how marvelous oh how wonderful and my song shall ever be And my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Some in glory, his face I lay. 
as shall see, will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. stand amazed because love lifted me. 521. Five, two, one. Mm -hmm. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. To him I'll cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, Philip's his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Song of encouragement tonight will be four, five, six. Four, five, six. I'll live for him. the book of Second Peter last week, and I haven't picked a, another book, per se, but uh, we're going to do a little theme this evening, uh, we won't call it anything for a little bit, Hebrews chapter 10. First and Second Peter uh, talked a lot about uh, a cost and remembering, uh, you know, that we're to add to our faith all the different things that we're supposed to add to it, and a warning about if you've forgotten that, that if you stop growing or start fo stop following, you forgot that you were cleansed from your sin. In Hebrews chapter five, I'll do. Uh, Verse 35 through 39. You mean Hebrews chapter 5 or 6? Hebrews five. chapter 10. Oh, no, no, no. 35 to 39. 
get my notes here. I gotta put my finger on my No, that's all right. I, it, it happens, trust me. It's no big deal. You just want to know where you're at. It says, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, mm -hmm. which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you can receive the promise for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anybody draws back, my soul has no pleasure in them. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. And the theme this evening is actually, don't look back. And I want to start with Hebrews because he's telling us, look for that reward, constant endurance for what's coming. <laughs> um, and that we're not those that draw back and give up, but we're pushing on to that goal that we have, that eternal life that we have. In Luke chapter, oh, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Beth, would you we're going to start on this side of the room this evening? Would you happen to have that? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 10 through 12. Wisdom gives life to those who have it. That's why we're to grow in knowledge so we know. But it says here that why do you say, man, I wish for the good old days? Why do I think that the past was so much better or long for the good old days? Or He says here, were the former days better than these? He says, it's not wise to think like that, to think back. Or, you know, we always... We pick out the good things a lot of times, some bad things, but we think of the past as being so much better than maybe today. Uh, I don't believe it's true. It's just that's how our memory seems to work at, at times. But God says, don't long for back there. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus put a, a definitive mark on this particular uh, ideal. Luke chapter 9 verse 61 and 62 at the end of the chapter. Debbie, do you have that? Chapter 9, 61 and 62, the end of the chapter. And the mother of the church, holy of the soul of you, but let me first say in Roman, Felix and Sergio, who are at home. The king said to him, No one now can put his hand to the plow and look in back except for the kingdom of God. That puts a definitive ideal on looking back. Mm -hmm. Or I have a habit sometimes of thinking back when I was a kid, and uh, mine are not good, mine are bad. All the things I did, crazy, and this, that, and the other, and uh, but sometimes I look at it fondly, as a worldly person, not as a spiritual person. The, the weird, uh, just being free, supposedly in this world, and doing evil thinking you had freedom, but not really. But he says here, you know, once you start on this path, 
Don't look back. Don't look back. Um, I don't know the circumstances around this gentleman, but God, you know that Jesus knew what people in their heart. Yeah. And so his answer to this gentleman, he knew this gentleman. He knew how, how he was thinking. But he, if he went back, he probably never would have followed him. You know what I mean? Maybe he knew that. I don't know. But all I know is what Jesus really did say, and he did say this, if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. We need to be careful about looking back at our past life, even our past sins. Okay? God forgot them already. We might be turned into a pillar of salt if we look back. <laughs> She's in here. <laughs> but you know, the next day, Lot went back to the same spot and looked at the same city. The next day. We'll, we'll look at that. Uh, there's a script there. But I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You thought, you know, she looked back and he said, don't look back. Right. But he's looking back for a different reason. And she was. Um, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Mm -hmm. Verses 18 through 21. Karen, do you have that please? Isaiah. Chapter 43. Having a hard time finding Isaiah? Uh, oh, okay. Because sometimes it's hard to... Uh, it's, uh, okay. Chapter 43, 18 through uh, 21. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, and jackals and owls shall not provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give me its messenger, my servant, the people I formed for myself. He's telling the people of Israel, forget the former things. I'm making a new path for you. So why? So you can praise me. That's the reason God saved you, so you can praise him and recognize him and honor him and adore him and, and uh, just, just love God. I was thinking this week, a side note here, you know when the, the disciples were walking with Jesus, they didn't look at him with awe. They looked at him as a, an elder brother, of someone who just did right. And his holiness was in doing right. But he was a man just like us, and, he, and, they, and they walked, they talked together, they hung out together, they worked together. See, you know, that, that one uh, movie that out called The Chosen, mm -hmm. all right, they don't get it all right. But it's a good theme because it shows an everyday walking of Jesus and being a person. My relationship with Jesus is not that close. It should be, but it's not. And I was thinking about that this week. I look at Christ as someone high and holy, just like God. But Jesus really wants to be our brother walking daily with us as a friend, as a comforter. Just like the disciples and Mary and all them, they hung out together. They actually, you know, they probably went fishing. Well, they did go fishing together, didn't they? <laughs> Obviously, they fished. They did things together as people. And righteousness and holiness was what? Just doing right all the time. Doing what was good all the time. And maybe we need to think about that us. We're never going to be holier than thou. But how about just concentrate on being good and right all the time and and walking with Jesus and and because he wants to be our guide each and every day as a friend and most of the time most of the time I look at him not like that I look at him high and holy and he is because he deserves that like the father does but 
really? I would be just like the disciples, known him as a friend, and, and 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 get things wrong. And when he when he told Peter, get behind me, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When he said, you know, I'll do this or I'll, you know, and 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 having mercy, even though he's sitting at a table with those that are going to betray the person that was going to turn him in and cause his death, and the people below him at the at the cross, Father, for instead of hatred or forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. That's the type of Jesus we should know and get to love. Uh, and that, not a side note, but that's why we don't look back. We look forward. The, the scripture here on, in Hebrews, forgetting those things, but look forward. Mm -hmm. and, and if we do that, we won't stumble. And we'll find more peace in this world than looking back on our old self and sins and stuff like that. And we'll have more joy because we can praise God for what is, mm -hmm. not what was. Okay? Uh, and that was free. Um, <laughs> Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Because oh, as I was trying to find out uh, a lesson for this evening, those are the types of things that are trying to come, like, what area do I want to go? And that one just came across when I was reading some of the, even these scriptures. Philippians chapter 3.13 Bellaphon 3.13. Actually, let's do a bunch of them. Go verse 12 to 4.1. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to In verse 12, chapter 3, verse 12 of mm -hmm. Philippians. Not that I have already attained, uh, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus therefore let us as many as are mature have this mind and if in anything you think otherwise God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in. Follow my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conform, conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Therefore, my beloved, and long for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Really don't need to explain that it's pretty clear what the scriptures say. And that's why it's great to just read God's word. Because it teaches so much here. He says, be steadfast. Look for that prize. Go ahead. Don't look back. He says, don't. Uh, uh, towards the end of that, he talks about 
those that are too earthly minded. Mm -hmm. We have to guard ourselves that we don't become so earthly minded that we're laying up treasures here. It's okay to lay up treasures here to take care of those that we're going to leave in that sense. That's not what I'm talking about. But sometimes we we are worldly in the way that we're accumulating and for us. And not right or wrong, but we need to be careful that that doesn't become our focus because then we don't have any time for spiritual things, for spiritual growth, for spiritual service. Um, so it's just a warning here through Philippians. But uh, you get a lot out of these, okay, as far as Paul. But he talks about striving and keep on going and don't look back. You know, the, the one we read in Luke mm -hmm. uh, about the guy that Jesus said, you know, come. And he says, well, let me go do this first. Mm -hmm. um, that is so true. Uh, I've been in personal Bible studies with people and them realizing they need to be baptized. But they want to think about it for a day or two. And then you never hear from them again. Or you never, you call them back and all of a sudden you can't get them. Yeah, they, uh, this yeah. one time uh, I was studying with a guy Randy Patterson was with me a good friend of mine and he's a good Christian too and, and we were studying with this lady and uh, she said well I know I need to be baptized but I need to Randy said well let's go now <laughs> yeah. I mean literally oh yeah let's go now he said don't don't put it off he said if you realize it let's do it and to this day that lady's still a Christian and I really believe she's a Christian because Randy encouraged her to let's just go. She yeah. said, but I, he said, no, let's just go. You already said it. You need it. You, you feel it's necessary. She said, yeah. He said, well, let's go. And, and she went. And a lot of people that have to think about it realize that it asks too, God asks too much of them, not realizing that God isn't asking anything of them. He's trying to give them mm -hmm. life. He's not wanting to take life. He wants to give them life, but they don't understand it because they're not spiritually minded. This gospel can only be understood by spiritually minded people. Romans teaches that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Years later, I asked her about that, and she just said that she just she just wasn't ready to change yet. Yeah. She she knew she needed to change, and she wasn't ready to change. But she said the more Randy said, "Come on." The more she felt God saying, well, this is what you need. But, so but she, you kind so of she think did. about it. When are you going to be like, I need to change first. Well, you so can't. you're you're relying on <laughs> yourself. What? You're gonna when are you gonna be good enough? Oh, never. 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 You're never, never. never gonna be never. good enough. So I it's really that, a, I think that moment is, you know, some people are counting the cost. Do yeah. I want to give this up? Do I want to give this up? Can I give this up? Can I not? They're counting this? the wrong Can cost. I, I know. <laughs> it can be overwhelming. Yeah. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. But if you look back, I have a quote here. We're not you, allowed. <laughs> <laughs> looking back, you'll never reach your destiny. If you're looking backwards, you never reach your destiny. Uh, re but self-reflection is good. Yeah. We're not talking about that kind of looking back. That, that's what I was going to say earlier. You know, sometimes it's, I think, okay to look. It's beneficial to look back because you In know where manner. you came from. And now, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. I, I, I bring at that a lot. Yeah. I look back and say, oh, my goodness. Thank, you know. Yeah. I'm so Thanks glad that I <laughs> redeemed and mm -hmm. Given. Genesis chapter 19, 23 to 26. Uh, Gary? 23 to 6? Yep. By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation on the land. But Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Now read a little bit more. Early the next morning, Abraham got up 
and returned to the place where he stood before the Lord, he looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and he sought out Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. I was wrong about Lot uh, going back the day the next day. The winter and actually looked at the city. But uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't the one escaping from the city, so I was wrong in my assumption. Well, that's, but, but uh, that's sometimes you read it, and then you got to go back and look at it again, because it, yeah, I do it all the time. Trust me. It's... But looking back was not good, but she wasn't looking back just to look back. No. no. She, it was a disobedience. Mm -hmm. And God destroyed everybody in that city. She, and she liked we, can, we can talk about homosexuality or not. It doesn't matter. Sexual immorality destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. right. Whatever that was, mm -hmm. sexual immorality also, the scripture says, why God is going to bring judgment on the earth today. Well, what is sexual immoral? Anything God says. I know. But, okay. so, so what's the only right way to, for sex to be permitted? Within marriage. marriage. There you yeah. go. So everything else is yes. immoral. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that that's something each individual so has to struggle with themselves. Okay? Yeah. And uh, I'll, uh, this, this evening is another lesson on that. Romans 8. 818. Romans 818. Okay. Marianne, would you 18 through 25, please? I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Mm. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Verse 25. Is that 25? Uh -huh. Oh, yours is. Mine's from the translation for this but it just says but if we hope for what we do not see we eagerly wait for it with perseverance so either thing either way okay yeah. yeah and that's what he's talking about if you don't look back you gotta have something to look forward to and that's what these scriptures are about all of creation is waiting for that day when God makes all things right we need to look in expectation for that that's right and think about it. And if we think about that more, it will take our minds off of the difficulties and the struggles of this life. So, you know, some of them are going to stay with us, but a whole lot of them will disappear in a vanish. A lot of them that, you know, we worry about something that will never ever happen, and we wring our hands and just sleepless nights, and it's silliness if we would have gave it to God in the first place. And then come true anyway. You know, what if? And, and we all have that problem at times. <laughs> spiritually minded, be spiritually minded, is what we were looking for. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. You know, the things that we have talked about this evening is is looking back and that you know, it is difficult at times uh, to know it but in Matthew chapter 19 verse 26 Natalie do you have that please yeah. <clears throat> but Jesus looked at them and said with man this is impossible but with God all things are possible mm -hmm. okay he was just talking to them about uh, uh, a rich man 
and who can get into heaven? And everybody's ideal was if you're rich, you're good, right? You know, and if you're poor and crippled and stuff, sin must have happened. You know, your parents must have sinned, or you sinned, and that's why you're crippled. You know, that that theme was in their life. Right. And so they recognize that if, if they're if you're rich, God blessed you, so you have to be righteous. Not so. He says it's hard for a rich man to get to heaven. But the the point of this scripture is, you know, with man, a lot of things are impossible. How do I how, how do I change for the future? How do I concentrate on not thinking about my past and, the, and, and things? You know, with man it might be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus said. And, and, and that's why faith is so important, because we have faith in not our abilities and not what we think, but in God. Mm -hmm. God has over and over said, you know, uh, I'll make things straight. I'll make things right. I'll do this, you know. I'm the one that's doing these things. Mm -hmm. and, and his love permeates us, and he wants only good for us. Mm -hmm. Not that this world does, mm -hmm. but God does. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, if you doubt, Jesus says, you know, with, with God, everything's possible. Mm -hmm. So you can become better. You can have a better outlook on life. Oh, yeah. You can have more hope, because that's what your focus is on. And that's why I say we don't look back. Uh, Colossians chapter, we did that. Colossians? Yeah, mm -hmm. we did Colossians 3. You did that, I believe. No, that was oh, Philippians 3. Oh, okay. Sorry. Colossians chapter 3. I thought I doubled it. Double book. Three, twenty-two and 20, twenty-three. Uh, Don? Mm -hmm. Okay. Slaves obey your earthly masters in everything. And do it not only when their eyes are on you, but to cur curse mm -hmm. Curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence of the Lord. Whatever you do, work as it is to your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Serve God, not man. Because most of our problems come with man, others. It just, it is. Others bring us down, others disappoint us. Others use us. Others, the human race, uh, sometimes is unkind to us. But he says, "Hey, you don't serve." And and he's talking to slaves here. Yeah. Man, we're not slaves in America here. We're pretty free. But he's telling them, and and that uh, term was eye service. Uh, not when the masters are watching. I'm I'm doing the job. <laughs> you walk away. Step down, put the feet up. Uh, he says, no. He says, not only when they're watching you, when they're not. Because you're not serving him, you're serving God. Right. And to get that concept in our head, in our heart, is, is difficult. I, you know, 